Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. In this video here, I'm going to show you how to port over Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge for retro handheld devices. And this is going to work for any of the retro handhelds that are supported by the custom firmwares of ArcOS, Jealous, or Amber Elect. And so that means altogether, you should be able to play this on about a dozen different retro handheld devices. And I'll show off a lot of these here in the intro section, and I'll also have a list of them in the written guide below. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I watched the show as a kid, I had all the action figures, and I played all the games to death. In fact, my mom still sends me Ninja Turtle themed Christmas presents every year. And I kind of wish she would stop doing that. So mom, if you're listening, let's, uh, let's take a break this year. Now, a few things about this, you know, the game just came out a couple weeks ago, and it is amazing. This is one of the best beat-em-ups I've played in a long time. And it's made by Tribute Games, the same people that made Streets of Rage 4. And setting this up for your retro handheld device couldn't be easier. It actually only takes a few minutes. All you really have to do is have a Steam copy of the game and then move some files over onto your device. And this port was made possible by developer Johnny on Flame, so mad props to him for his work on this. Now, one quick caveat, you know, the performance on the RG351 devices is not going to be as super smooth as it will be on some of the more modern Ambernick devices. But that being said, I think it's completely playable on any of these. But all things considered, it definitely plays best on the RG552, but the 353P and the 503 also look really nice too. Anyway, I think that's plenty for an intro now, so let's actually jump into the tutorial. Now to start, you're going to want to buy the game on Steam. I think it costs something like $20, $22 altogether. And then after you've bought the game, if you're on Windows and Linux, all you have to do is actually install the game onto your PC. Now if you're on Mac, I have instructions on the written guide to how to grab these files from a repository. Regardless, it's going to download the files and then install them onto your PC, and we're already halfway there to being done. Let me show you where to find those game files on your PC. You're going to want to go to Local Disk, then Program Files x86, and then go into Steam, then then Steam Apps, and then Common. Within here, there should be a folder called TMNT, and within that folder are all the game data files we're going to want to move over. Now in the written guide, I'll have a link to this file right here. It is tmnt.zip. And all you want to do here is just extract these files. You can either do extract all or go into WinRAR if you have it installed. Either way, just unzip this file and it'll give you a folder as well as an sh file. And we can actually delete the zip after that. We don't need it anymore. Now within that tmntsr folder, there's going to be another folder called game data. What you want to do here is grab all of those files from the installation that you did earlier and then copy them over into that game data folder. Now you may get a prompt right here to replace a certain OGV file. Now this is the intro movie from the game and unfortunately this doesn't run well on retro handhelds. And so for that reason, the developer added a blank one here to kind of overwrite that and skip that intro video. So when you get to this part here, just select skip this file so that you don't overwrite that blank movie file. And after you've copied those files over, we're actually done with the setup. All we have to do now is add it to our device. So I'm going to use an RG351V that's running ArcOS. So I'm going to plug in my ArcOS SD card here, and then I'm just going to navigate to the ports folder. And then within that ports folder, all you want to do is move those two files over onto the SD card. It'll take a few minutes to move everything over, but you're actually good to go. You can eject the SD card and then put it back into your device. Next, all we have to do is boot up our retro handheld and then navigate to the ports folder and then find the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game file. After that, you can go ahead and press the A button to launch the game and then just go ahead and kick back because this can take upwards of 15 minutes to parse through everything. What it's doing here is taking some of those heavier game files and compressing them so that they work better on a retro handheld. Now, usually during these periods, I like to say, just go grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever, but actually we're gonna be productive right now. Instead, I have a bunch of these stickers that Sakura Retro Modding sent over to me a couple months back. And so I think now is a good time to put one of these on my RG351V. And there are lots of different stickers to choose from here, but honestly, because the RG351V is kind of shaped like a Game Boy, to me, it makes the most sense to add this Game Boy sticker instead. And of course, I don't think I need a tutorial to show you how to put a sticker on a device, but obviously just kind of wipe down the device, make sure there's no dust or anything on it. And then when you apply the sticker, just make sure you take your time and be nice and careful. What I typically like to do is line up one corner perfectly and then line it up to the next corner in a parallel line. From there, I just kind of slowly move my way up to reach the next two corners. From there, it's just a matter of smoothing out the sticker and you're good to go. And this sticker here is very precisely cut. It actually works really well. It covers the entire bezel as well as that Ambernick logo too. 
Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and so now the game is ready to launch. By the way, I should say that after this one time, everything's going to load up a lot faster in the future. It's not going to be instant, but it'll take maybe 30 to 40 seconds altogether. Anyway, here we go. As you can see here, it's scaled to the 640x480 display here on the RG351V. The only thing I recommend when it comes to settings tweaks is to go into the options and then customize the controls because by default the A, B, and X, Y are going to be swapped. And so you want to make sure that your jump button is the B button and your attack button is the Y button. And unfortunately the control scheme does not save when you exit out of the game so you will have to do this every time you boot up a new game. But it only takes a second and from there you can just jump into the ninja gaming. Anyway that's about it for this video here. I just thought it was pretty exciting to take what is essentially a brand new game and start playing it on a retro handheld within the first few weeks of release. And like I mentioned before, I have a full written guide in the video description below, so if you have any questions or whatever, I recommend checking that out. But of course, you could always leave me a question in the comments below, I'll be sure to read it and try to answer as best as I can. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.